Hey All Stars, thanks for joining again. My name is Mitch, and in this video we're going to be reading what is kind of the sequel to what we already read, You Are Special, and now we're going to be reading You Are Mine, also by Max Lucata. Let's get started. Punchinello lived in Wemmicksville, just like all the other Wemmicks. He was made of wood, just like the other Wemmicks, and he was carved by Eli, the Wemmick maker. And just like the other Wemmicks, he sometimes did silly things, like the time he began collecting boxes and balls. Things started getting crazy when a Wemmick named Tuck bought a new box. Others had boxes, but Tuck's was a new box. Tuck loved his new box. He thought it was the best box in the village. It was brightly colored, and he was proud of it. Too proud, perhaps. He strutted up and down the street, showing off his box. Have you seen my new box? He would ask the Wemmicks as he passed on the street. Would you like to touch my new box? Tuck marched right up to Punchinello. Don't you wish you had a new box, he teased. Punchinello thought Tuck's box was beautiful, and he began to wish for a box of his own. Tuck kept showing off his box, thinking it was better than, than the other Wemmicks, just because he had a new box. Nip, another Wemmick, disagreed. My box is just as good as Tuck's, he said, and he showed off his box to, to Wemmicks on the other side of the street. Nip's box was not new, but it was a bit bigger and a bit brighter, a bit more than Tuck could take. Tuck got very quiet and gave Nip a mad look. Then he had an idea. He stepped into a store and bought a ball. Now he had more things than Nip. He had a box and a ball. Nip frowned at Tuck's ball. Nip could do better than that. He bought two balls. With a smile on his face, two balls and a box in his hands, he marched over to Tuck and smirked. Now I have more than you. Before he knew it, Tuck was in the store buying yet another box. Then Nip ran to buy another ball. Then Tuck a ball. Then Nip bought a box. Ball, box, ball, box, back and forth. Tuck, Nip, Nip, Tuck. On and on it went. Someone could have stopped the whole mess right there. In fact, that's what the mayor tried to do. You two are being silly, said the mayor. Why, who cares who has the most toys? You're just jealous, they replied, because you don't have any. Jealous of you? Ha! Huh. But when a f within a few moments, the mayor was in the store buying an armful of boxes and balls himself. Other Wemmicks began to join in. The butcher, the baker, the cabinet maker, the doctor from up the street, and the dentist from down the street. Before long, every Wemmick wanted to be the one with the most balls and boxes. Some boxes were big, and some were bright. Some were heavy, and some were light. Tall people carried them. Small people carried them. Everybody carried them, and everybody thought the same thought. Good Wemmicks have a lot. Not so good Wemmicks have little. When a Wemmick walked down the center of Wemmickville with a stack of balls and boxes higher than his head, the people stopped. Now there goes a good Wemmick, they would say. But when a Wemmick passed by with only one ball or box, the others would shake their heads and think, maybe even whisper, Poor, poor Wemmick. Poor Wemmick. Of course, Punchinello didn't want to be called a poor Wemmick. So he decided to get as many boxes and balls as he could. He searched through his closet and found one little ball. He dug into his pocket and found enough money for one small box. I know what I'll do, he declared. I'll sell my books to get more money to buy more boxes and balls. So he did. He bought a blue and a green box with clouds painted on the sides. But still, he wanted more. I'll work nights to get extra money, he told himself. So he did and bought a ball. And since he was working nights, he didn't need his bed, so he decided, I'll sell my bed. And he did just that, to buy two more balls. Soon Punchinello had an armful, but other Wemmicks had more. Some of them had so many boxes and balls, they actually had trouble walking. 
It's hard keeping up with all my balls and boxes, they would say, acting as if they were complaining, but really, they were bragging. Punchinello wanted to be like these Wemmicks, so he sold more stuff, and he worked more hours. His eyes were tired from not getting any sleep. His arms were heavy and tired from carrying the toys. He couldn't remember when he last sat down to rest. And worst of all, his friends couldn't remember when Punchinello last came to play. We haven't seen you for a long time, his friend Lucia said to him one day. Why don't you come play again? asked his buddy Splint. Not everyone cared about the boxes and balls. Punchinello's friends didn't. But Punchinello cared more about having boxes and balls than he cared about having friends. I've got work to do, he would tell them, and his friends would sigh. Punchinello didn't care. He only cared what the other box and ball people thought. And no matter what he did, he couldn't buy enough things to get their attention. Finally, he had an idea. I will sell my house, he decided. That's crazy, cried Lucia. Where will you live? asked Splint. Punchinello didn't know, but he didn't care. All he could think about was the boxes and balls he would have with all that money. So he sold his house. He bought boxes and boxes and boxes and balls and balls and more balls. He carried so many toys he couldn't see where he was going. His stack went way above his head. So he didn't mind. So what if the, his arms were... What? So what if his arms ached? So what if he kept walking into walls? So what if he had no friends? He had boxes and balls, and when he passed Wemmicks, they would turn and say, Wow, he must be a good Wemmick. Punchinello heard them. He couldn't see him, but he heard them, and he felt good. I am a good Wemmick, he thought. But then somebody changed the rules. It was the mayor's wife. She was very proud of her boxes and balls. She not only had a lot of them, but she also had special kinds of them. She bought them at the fanciest stores with funny names and left the names on the boxes so everyone would see them. She wanted to be the best women. One day she had an idea. Not only will I have the most, but I will also go the highest. So she climbed on top of her boxes and shouted, Look at me, everybody! Immediately, all the box and ball people tried to outdo her. One climbed on a fountain, another on a balcony, and another onto a roof. It was the mayor who spotted the mountain, whoever, however. Behind the village of Wemix was Wemix Peak. I'm going to the top of the mountain, he shouted, hoping to get there first. The race was on to see which Wemmick would have the most and climb the highest. Wemmicks loaded with boxes and balls began running up the mountain. It was a crazy, crazy race. Since the wooden people couldn't see where they were going, they bumped into each other. Since they were exhausted, they fell over their own feet. Since the trail was narrow, some fell off the side of it, but they kept going. Bringing up the rear was Punchinello. He was having a hard climb, harder than the rest. After all, He'd only been a good Wemmick for a short time. He wasn't used to carrying so many boxes and balls. But he was determined. He kept putting one little wooden foot ahead of the other, but since he couldn't see, he didn't know he was on the side of the trail. And since he couldn't see, he didn't know he was on the side of the trail. All he knew that, all of a sudden, he was alone. I must be ahead of everyone else, he thought to himself. And so he kept climbing up and up. And up. I must be very near the top. I'm such a good Wemmick. I'll be the highest with the most, he thought. About that time, Punchinello's foot caught the edge of something. He tried to keep his balance. His toys swayed to the right and to the left. He leaned back, then forward, but he couldn't stop. He was going to fall. He didn't know, however, he had walked up the trail to Eli's house. He tripped on the step of the porch and tumbled through the front door of Eli's workshop. When Punchinello realized where he was, he was embarrassed. For a long time, he stayed face down on the floor, surrounded by his boxes and balls. One of the balls rolled across the floor and stopped at Eli's workbench. 
That's when the woodcarver turned around. Punchinello? Eli's voice was calm and deep and kind. The Wemmick still didn't move. He could feel his wooden face turning red. Looks like you've been carrying a big load. The weary Wemmick climbed to his knees but kept his head low. These are my boxes and balls, he said. Do you play with the boxes and balls, asked Eli. Punchinello shook his head. Do you like the boxes and balls? I like the way they make me feel. And how do they make you feel? Important, Punchinello answered, still with a small voice. Hmm, Eli observed. So you've been thinking like the other Wemmicks. You've been thinking that the more you have, the better you are and the happier you'll be. I suppose so. Come here, Punchinello. I want to show you something. Punchinello lifted his wooden head and looked at Eli for the first time. He was relieved to see that the Wemmick maker wasn't angry. Punchinello followed Levi, Eli over to the window. Look at them, Eli said. Punchinello looked out the window at the swarm of Wemmick still climbing the mountain. They were tumbling, stumbling, fighting each other, even elbowing each other to get ahead. Do they look happy? Eli asked. Punchinello just shook his head. Do they look important? Not at all, Punchinello said, noticing the mayor and his wife. The mayor was on the ground, and she was stepping on his back. She had a box on her head and a ball in his mouth. Do you think I created Wemmicks to act that way? asked Eli. No. Punchinello felt a big hand on his shoulder. Do you know how much your boxes and balls cost you? My books in my bed, my money in my house. My little friend, they cost you much more than that. Punchinello was trying to remember what else he had sold when Eli continued. They cost you happiness. You haven't been happy, have you? Punchinello paused. No. They cost you friends. And most of all, they cost you trust. You didn't trust me to make you happy. You trusted these boxes and balls. Punchinello looked at the pile of toys. All of the sudden, they didn't seem so valuable. I guess I kind of messed up. That's okay, Eli replied. You're still special. Punchinello ducked his head and smiled. You're special not because of what you have. You're special because of who you are. You are mine. I love you. Don't forget that, little friend. I won't. Punchinella smiled. Then he paused and asked, Eli? Yes. What should I do with these boxes and balls? Perhaps you should give them to someone who really needs them. Punchinella turned to leave, but stopped again. Eli? Yes. I don't have a place to sleep. Eli smiled and offered, Would you like to sleep here tonight? I sure would. I'm very tired. And so that night, Punchinella slept on a bed of wood shavings. He slept well. It felt good to be in the house of his maker. The end. Thank you for joining me today.